welcome back in the part 4 video of chest strain ICU and ICU in HDU in this presentation and discussion we will study the chest x-ray in ICU and HDU all right so let's start I'm Dr. Ravi Kumar Sharma pulmonologist and critical care consultant currently working here at Bhopal so let's start what is the objective of discussion in this discussion we will look for indication of chest x-ray in HDU and ICU we have to understand understand the limitation in interpreting bedside x-ray because the films taken in the ICU and HDU are AP films and we have to understand the limitation in the interpreting the bedside films. Then we have to be watchful interpretation in appropriate clinical settings. We have to be watchful while looking at the lines and tubes and we have always interpret with old films if available and or with the clinical history. Okay. So, the most common encounter disease state in the ICU settings are pulmonary parenchymal diseases, pulmonary thromboembolism, barotrauma, fluid diffusion, assessment of various catheters, lines and tubes that are commonly used in ICU settings. Coming to the pulmonary parenchymal diseases, the most common, the common pulmonary parenchymal diseases process in the ICU patient includes pulmonary edema that is hydrostatic pulmonary edema, ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, atelectasis or collapse pneumonias, aspiration and pulmonary hemorrhages. So, these are the most commonly encountered pulmonary parenchymal disease in ICU and HDU patient. Let us discuss one by one hydrostatic pulmonary edema. What are the cause? The, the, the two most common cause of increased hydrostatic pressure pulmonary edema in critical care settings is one is left heart failure and second is the fluid overload. Other causes are liver and renal failure. And sometimes in trauma patient, you, we sometimes overhydrate, we give more fluid in those uh, to those trauma patient and that leads to the hydrostatic pulmonary edema. And sometimes the immediately post-operative patient, they usually sometimes they, re they receive uh, fluid sometimes and that is uh, becomes a cause of pulmonary edema in post-operative patient sometimes. How will you? assess in the radiographic finding in the x-ray if you do x-ray in a patient with hydrostatic pulmonary edema we can have this kind of findings we can have indistinctness of the intrapulmonary vasculature there may be peribronchial cuffing and there are there may be curly lines there may be nodular or acidal area of increased opacity or there may be frank consolidation all these findings develop over time depending on the pressure gradient in the pulmonary vasculature so these findings they start in the timeline and as per the pulmonary vasculature as long as the pressure in the pulmonary circulation pulmonary vasculature rises the findings becomes obvious all right so indistinctness of pulmonary vasculature is a subtle but it is often the most useful radiographic sign of early interstitial edema in early phase of interstitial edema in icu patient we can get this this sign indistinctness of pulmonary vasculature what is indistinctness it pulmonary vasculature becomes obscured it is faint it is not very clear so that is the earlier sign sometime in the icu patient of pulmonary edema here you can have the x-ray of the patient this is the ap bedside film of a patient of acute myocardial infarction demonstrating the here you can see re redistribution of the pulmonary vessels with upper lobe diversion this was on admission to the icu in the next day we can see here the features of interstitial edema just developing in the form of indistinctness of the pulmonary vessels, pulmonary vessels we are not able to delineate properly and you, here we can see the bilateral perihilar haziness. Okay. So, this is the finding, this is gradually developing in the patient of acute myocardial infarction over time. The same patient, what happens? The progression of to bilateral central consolidation and a small pulmonary diffusion that represents alveolar edema. Here we can see the same patient is progressing towards pulmonary edema and that this x-ray was obtained on the third day. This can here you can see the classical sign with here is we can see the apparent cardiomegaly. All right. So, this is a progressive hydrostatic pulmonary edema in a patient with acute myocardial infarction. This is another x-ray showing interstitial pulmonary edema from congestive heart failure. Look at the heart size, heart size apparently looking abnormally large cardiomegaly, apparently cardiomegaly is there, but yes it is epiphyll, so sometimes it is becomes very difficult to comment on. So, what is here? Now, in the we can see in the V, in the early stage of pulmonary edema, 
this is a progressive increase in the width of vascular pedicle this is a vascular pedicle here we can see vascular pedicle is gradually enlarging as compared to the x-ray a and indistinction of the pulmonary vessels here we can see pulmonary vessels are obscured they are not very clear and also there is a sign of interstitial edema here we can see central vessels looks enlarged that is giving rise to widened vascular pedicle as compared to x-ray as in the a all right now coming to the ARDS what is ARDS in the previous videos we have discussed acute respiratory distress syndrome we should remember that ARDS is a form of acute lung injury due to severe pulmonary injury that cause diffuse alveolar damage heterogeneously throughout the lung it is a disease uh, it is actually ARDS is a not a disease first of all we should remember it is a presentation of lung injury okay so ARDS is a clinical presentation it is a syndrome and that is because of severe pulmonary injury and pathologically characterized by diffuse alveolar damage and this is a heterogeneously throughout the lung it can either result from a direct pulmonary source or as a response to the systemic injury ARDS definition is Berlin criteria to define ARDS it has a four component one is timing second is the radiology or chest imaging third is origin of edema and fourth is oxygenation how to remember this very simple to remember the ARDS so A means acute acute means it is less than a week of clinical insult new or worsening respiratory symptoms timing is less than a year, less than one week all right R is for radiology radiology means chest imaging what we get in the radiology bilateral opacities which are not explained by effusion lobar or lung collapse or not use this thing we have to remember always D is for edema or edema so origin of edema so this respiratory failure not fully explained by cardiac failure or food overload this bilateral shadowing or respiratory failure should not be because of any cardiac compromise or because of the fluid overload sometimes it needs objective assessment to exclude hydrostatic pulmonary edema if no other risk factors are present then S4 S4 systemic oxygenation after oxygenation depending on oxygenation or PF ratio that is PaO2 by FiO2 ratio we categorize ARDS as mild moderate and severe category in mild ARDS PF ratio is less than 300 with PEEP of PEEP or CPAP more than 5 cm of water in moderate this is 100 to 200 with PEEP more than 5 cm of water in severe ARDS this ratio is less than 100 with or equal to 100 with PEEP of more than 5 cm of water so what happens in ARDS? ARDS we all know that there is an underlying etiology that may be infection, there may be trauma, that may be sepsis. So that cause in actually in uh, inducer of inflammatory cascade. What happens? This etiology cause release of this is in, initially encountered in the alveolar macrophages. Any etio, any injury or any uh, inciting event for ARDS is initially taken care by the alveolar macrophages most of the time. This alveolar macrophages as a result of inflammation releases pro-inflammatory cytokines like PNF, interleukin 1, 6 and 8. These pro-inflammatory cytokines, they what they do? They recruit the inflammatory cells from the systemic circulation. Neutrophils comes in the alveolar space and the alveoli and after the neutrophils are activated due to this pro-inflammatory cytokines, they release toxic materials toxic mediators cytokines chemokines and ultimately what does these cytokines chemokines do they do number one capillary endothelial damage and they also damage the type 2 pneumocyte cells so what happens due to cap capillary endothelial damage because of the capillary endothelial damage the alveoli and the are flooded with the proteinaceous fluid that comes from a systemic circulation so alveoli are overloaded alveoli are flooded with the proteinaceous uh, fluid from the systemic circulation and what happens when there is a type 2 cells, type 2 pneumocytes, they are, as we know, type 2 pneumocytes are involved in the surfactant production, okay. So if the type 2 cells are damaged, there will be surfactant loss ultimately leading to the alveolar collapse because surfactant keeps the alveoli open. So once surfactant are lost, alveoli will be collapsed and consequently as the disease, as the ARDS advances, the initial to start a particular segment or sub-segment of the lung will be involved, later on the whole lung, whole lobe can be collapsed and that will not take part in ventilation leading to the hypoxia. So clinical feature is progressive dyspnea with worsening hypoxia, hypoxemia and bilateral infiltrate on the chest image with 6 hours to 7 days of inciting event. Pathophysiology we have discussed already, 
there will be alveolar injury there will be excess fluid in the system and alveoli and that leads to the impaired gas exchange decreased lung compliance and increased pulmonary arterial pressure decreased lung compliance means lung compliance is stretchability so if there is a lung is filled with the exudate filled with the uh, inflammatory cells inflammatory uh, cytokines chemokines so thus that lung will become stiff that becomes uh, that lungs become stiff it means that the lung compliance is decreased and it is difficult to, for ERDS lung to inflate all right so that we say that there is a decreased lung compliance and that leads to increased pulmonary arterial pressure here we can see the x-ray of ARDS showing a bilateral shadow corpulent opacities how to diagnose history and physical examination there you, you can find sometime in identify the anxiety event we can do imaging chest CT or we can do an x-ray that will show bilateral patch infiltrates we can do a chest ultrasound and we can see the B lines and consolidation pattern testing testing is very important that we do ABG to determine the severity of ARDS like mild moderate severe based on the PO to FIO to ratio and we have to exclude other causes of ARDS by doing ECG and ECO so that cardiac part to be ruled out all right so what is the radiographic feature this is the first one is the only accepted radiographic feature in the ARDS that is diffuse bilateral coalescent opacities this is very unique and this is the most accepted finding in the ARDS because ARDS is a diffuse lung injury it can present in the many forms and it can present also in the many diseases also so but ARDS this finding has been accepted by uh, different bodies so diffuse bilateral coalescent opacities are seen here you can see and there will be another second point there will be no cardiomegaly or heart size will be normal so but the findings of ARDS will vary upon the, the upon the phase of ARDS we all know the ARDS has a phase one that is early exudative phase then uh, phase 2 and after that fibrotic phase so what happens in initially there is a bilateral infiltrates but the same patient after one week here we can see the shadows are resolving here we can see the clearance of the lesion bilaterally and here we can see but some infiltrates are still there so this is how ARDS resolves over time and the chest x-ray finding consequently as per ARDS improves, ARDS resolves, the finding is also improving with the clearance of the lesions but sometimes radiological opacity persists and in some patients the residual uh, opacity is still left behind and they are they cause permanent damage sometime in the lungs and those patients require lifelong treatment in the form of uh, respiratory supportive therapy like and also pulmonary rehabilitation programs. Coming to the atelectasis or collapse. This is a very important thing especially seen in the ICU and one of the most common thing we observe we see in the ICU is due patient. So what does atelectasis mean? Atelectasis or collapse simply mean decrease in the lung volume. Only it is very simple to understand there is a collapse means there is a decrease in the lung volume. The atelectasis or collapse most commonly involves the left lower lobe we should remember then right lower lobe and then the right upper lobe. What are the causes of atelectasis? We can broadly divide into two causes, two types. One is obstructive collapse, another is non-obstructive collapse. In obstructive collapse, we can have a large airway obstruction, we can have a small airway obstruction. So large airway can be obstructed by tumor, that could be peri bronchial tumor or metastatic tumor. There may be inflammatory obstruction like tuberculosis in sarcoidosis. There may be foreign body or there may be malposition tracheal tube. Sometimes trachea, endotracheal tube is advanced in the right main bronchus that leads to left lower left lung is not ventilated ultimately left lower lobe uh, left entire lung can be collapsed all right and the, what is the cause of a small airway obstruction a small airway obstruction can be due to mucus plug could be in, because of inflammation because of bronchopneumonia bronchitis or bronchitis they all can cause the a small airway obstruction coming to the causes of at atelectasis that are non obstructive non obstructive means there is a compressive collapse there may be passive collapse there may be adhesive collapse Compressive collapse, it could be because of peripheral tumor that is compressing the lung parenchyma leading to the collapse. There may be interstitial diseases like sarcoidosis, lymphoma, there may be air trapping in the adjacent lung also. And passive collapse in case of bi basal collapse under anesthesia in the post operative patients. Sometimes in thoracic abdominal surgery, there may be pneumothorax that is air in the pleural cavity causing the compression of the or passive collapse of the lung at pleural fusion also by the same mechanism diaphragmatic hernia. Adhesive collapse is seen in the smoke inhalation, cardiopulmonary bypass. There is a video of atelectasis, small video for 5 minutes available on our channel for the better understanding of the collapse. 
uh, we can have also look on that link is given in the description box you can go and check out that coming to the chest x-ray sign of fatty lactic acid this is very very important we should all remember one is direct sign what is indirect sign? indirect sign direct sign is the is because of the area where the collapse is there where the particular part of lung that is involved so what will happen the area or the lung that is collapsed there will be increase of pacification in the area of atelectasis what will happen next there will be displacement of fissure the fissure will be displaced to the area of collapse because of the pull mechanism the collapsed lung will pull the fissure pull the media and pull the diaphragm to the site of collapse and obviously there will be loss of aeration and vascular signs the vasculars the vessels to that area will be crowded because of the collapse what are the indirect signs indirect signs are elevation of the hemidiaphragm because of the uh, pull of the collapsed lung and there will be mediation displacement to the side of the size of collapse to the side of collapse the area the lung that is collapsed the media stand to be shifted to that particular side there will be hilar displacement the hilar may be elevated in upper lobe collapse and depressed in the lower lobe collapse so indirect signs are sometimes seen in the large collapse sometimes very small segmental or sub segmental collapse usually do not give signs of uh, the indirect signs are not there in the very small collapse like sub segmental or segmental collapse we can only get very thin like band like opacity in that situation all right so now this is the ap chest radiograph of a post operative patient that demonstrate a band like opacity in the left lower jaw the here we can see this is a band like opacity that is left lower lobe collapse in the post operative patient so here we can see there is a band like opacity in the left lower zone that is causing left lower lobe collapse this this area here so here we can see entire right hemithorax is completely white white out lung and here you can see the trachea heart everything is pushed everything is there in the they are embedded in the this hemithorax and there is a compensatory hyperinflation of the opposite lung so this is a right total lung collapse all right so note that trachea is pulled toward the collapsed lung total white out lung what could be the cause if the patient is ventilated this could be because of the major airway obstruction sometimes mucus plugging could be a cause for this once you remove this mucus the lung will be open up and it will become healthy so coming to the right upper lobe collapse first we will see here how does x ray look like so what will happen in right upper lobe collapse the minor fissure this will go up and the mediastinal border is obscured the trachea is here we can see trachea will be also elevated to the collapsed area here we can see in this x ray there is right upper lobe collapse trachea shifted and mediastinum will be obscured mediastinum will be not clear in right upper collapse what we see in the latter the minor major fissure both will be pulled up and it will give rise a triangular shadow here we can see so it will uh, pulled up to pulled upwards causing a triangular opacity with well defined margin here we can see the margin in the lateral film golden s sign is very important to remember it is seen in the mass lesion in the lung that cause right upper lobe collapse and this is typically this upper part is formed by the minor fissure and this is formed by your mass itself and it is a very ominous sign in any patient so if the patient have a golden s sign and lung mass should be always evaluated and this patient have sometime lung cancer so we have to be very careful while reading the such kind of x-ray right middle lobe collapse how will it look like in a pa film here we can see the opacity just adjacent to the right heart border here we can see the right heart border and it to right heart border will not be clear it means that there will be silhouetting opacity of the right heart border okay in the lateral film you can see a wedge like opacity that is extending from the highlight here we can see so here, this is a example of silhouette sign so what is the importance of silhouette sign silhouette sign you can get if the opacity is here right lying in this part this part so we can see right heart border is not it's not clear we cannot delineate the right heart border it means the opacity is in the right middle lobe and not in the lower lobe because if there is opacity in the right lower lobe that will not obscure the right heart border in that case we can properly delineate the right heart border so this is the important of silhouette sign to know the pathology to know the lesion where is the lesion located in the lungs what happened in right lower lobe collapse we can see there is a well defined opacity 
here this part this is typical and here we can delineate the right heart border so right heart border is not obscured there is a no silhouette sign no silhouetting uh, sign here so it means this path this dg i mean this uh, abnormality or this abnormal shadow is arising from right lower lobe what how it look like in lateral film in lateral film this will be here it will look like this okay oblique fissure will be displaced and there is a loss of normal darkening the vertebra are taken as we go down but there will be loss because this is the area is obscured by the collapse lung in left upper lobe collapse what we we get there is a well like opacity and there is a trachea will be shifted to that side and you can get luftiger sign this is a typical because of the trachea is deviated to the left and sometimes there is a hilum is elevated hilum is also off and typical we get a left upper lobe collapse here in left upper lobe in lateral fin we can see this fissure will be displaced upward here we can see this is the fissure displaced upward all right in left lower lobe collapse we can see a opacity behind the heart we can see the, you can see here the heart you can see this opacity we can have a sometimes we can have a double left heart border so left heart this is another left heart border coming here another we can see another border is there. so it will give rise that a left heart border is uh, is there are two left heart border in that situation is always look for left lower lobe collapse so there is a triangular opacity visible through the heart with the loss of the medial border of diaphragm sometimes medial border is also obscured and in the lateral film here we can see fissure will be displaced downward and it will look like this coming to the pneumonia mechanical ventilation and expiration are the two main risk factor for pneumonia in icu patient we should remember always that ventilator associated pneumonia can occur in up to 24% of patient after two day of ventilation so this pneumonia mechanical ventilation aspiration these are the two very important cause of pneumonia in icu patient so how to diagnose the diagnosis of pneumonia in icu patient is often challenging why challenging because the air the air space opacity that opacity that developed because of pneumonia can be also seen in the various conditions like we have seen collapse it could be there in aspiration it could be there in pulmonary hemorrhages it can be also in the non infectious lung can be because of inflammation pulmonary edema or ards so this all kind of problem all kind of issues cause shadow on the x ray and that can cause diagnosis of pneumonia in icu patient difficult but yes there are some points like certain features one is air bronchogram if there is air bronchogram that is if there is a, you can see any opacity with air bronchogram this is this is a typically seen in case of pneumonatic consolidation because there is a inflammatory exudate inflammation is there all around inflammatory exudate filled up the alveoli and but the air containing airways they cast black shadow and all around you can see here is a white shadow here is a beautifully you can see this is a typical air bronchogram with the surrounding area of consolidation in ct which is also very uh, well seen here we can see this is the airway and this is the area of consolidated lung so air bronchogram is typically seen in the pneumonia but what happens in when the uh, in the sick patient with bed bound patient this also sometimes it could be air may not be here because of the mucus plugging sometime so in that situation pneumonia uh, this finding could be difficult air bronchogram may not be there but still if there is air bronchogram we can say safely say that yes it is a there is a pneumonatic consolidation all right so now but when we have a problem with this pneumonia or atelectasis how to differentiate it's very easy to differentiate we can do a ct chest and ct chest we have we know that atelectasis means volume loss so if there is a volume loss in ct chest then definitely this is atelectasis and there are certain imaging features that will look in pneumonia and that will be there in the atelectasis what will happen in pneumonia there will be confluent or nodular opacities and atelectasis usually opacities are linear and band like and well shaped in pneumonia opacities resolve slowly except aspiration pneumonia in pneumonia obviously is a slow resolving process but what happens in atelectasis opacities appear and resolve really quickly if we see that some op patient develops a typical opacity like right lower lobe or maybe left lower lobe and next day it disappears so if rapidly resolving shadow on x ray it is defines that there is some atelectasis there may be micro aspiration uh, micro mucus plugging that has caused atele atelectasis of the distal to the obstruction and that has improved by the proper nebulization proper suctioning so and chest physiotherapy so this opacity in atelectasis they appear and resolve very quickly 
And in pneumonia, yes, we can have a no sign of volumos, but in atelectasis, we, there will be a sign of volumos in the form of crowding of air bronchograms, facial deviation, mediastinal shifting, and diaphragmatic elevation. All these findings will be there in the atelectasis, but it will not be there in case of consolidation. So, thank you so much. This is a part 4 and another will continue in the part 5 with some more x-rays in the ICU and HDF. Okay, thank you.